We hear in the media about the potential economic and social fallout from our declining global cheap energy, but rarely do we talk about the people who are creating visionary and resourceful alternative solutions to these challenges. So I met up with game designer Ken Eklund, who created an online game called World Without Oil. Now, World Without Oil was a unique approach to engage people in exploring how a sudden and drastic spike in oil prices would affect their entire lives. The game mimicked the first 32 weeks of a global oil crisis where anyone could play by uploading a personal story, a podcast, or a video documenting an account of their imagined reality. One method of increasing resiliency may lie in the power we have to shape our future by simulating events that summon us to participate in possible scenarios as a way to prepare and instruct through a crisis. Most of the people playing the game already had a very firm foundation of peak oil, or were people coming to no, it who didn't no. know anything about the, it? There was a um, significant minority of people, I'll say, um, okay. who were peak oilers or who had thought about it. And, and they were significant because they had already done a bunch of study about this. And so when they posted stuff, huh. people would would say, oh, well, I can see that you've been thinking about this for a long time and, and your ideas are, are, are really together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they were, I think they were kind of um, influential because of the thought they had put into it already. But most of the people who were playing, you know, were, this was really their wake-up call. A lot of people, this was really this sort of kind of shocking idea sure. to think about that, um, that uh, the age of cheap oil was over and all of its implications and all the implications and and they were just starting to live out the implications and you could see i mean it's just one of the great things about the game is you can see people who come in and post their first time and then start engaging with other players and begin to essentially you know the the players are all catching each other up on kind of the ideas of what's going on and saying you know well you're lucky that that's happening in your neighborhood because in our neighborhood it kind of looks like this because of these factors or whatever, and people kind of re-examine their conceptions about what the end of cheap oil would really mean. Right. It really gets at what I find to be just incredibly fascinating, and that is how people uh, engaged with this idea completely differently because hmm. it was this game, because we're all playing what if, right. rather than, you know, when, when people come across peak oil stuff, oftentimes, the, the, all the fixation is on when exactly is, going to, is peak mm -hmm. oil going to happen and, and how do you know that it's going to happen and, and you, you need to prove to me that the peak oil is, is really real and we were not mm -hmm. going to, you know, and, all. and so the conversation kind of bogs down really in this sort of unanswerable thing. Right. If you think about World Without Oil, you just cut through that. Right. Do you know what? It's, it's happening. Okay. And, and what you found, one of the things, first of all, that you find out about World Without Oil is that when you tell people um, the oil crisis is here, uh -huh. they totally believe you. And they're not even all that concerned about what the reasons are. Because in the end, I mean, peak oil, is it here already? Is it about right. to come and whatnot? Who cares? Right. The here question is, are. what do I do here in right. my life, you know, mm -hmm. to, to actually be more resilient sure. in the case of that happening? And so that's what re people really focused on. Now, so, do you think the people who have played World Without Oil have achieved framework that will help them and people they know to engage and be proactive in light of these oncoming challenges? Do you think these people may be leaders in their communities because they enacted it in their minds already? And, and I think it's kind of important to say that World Without Oil did not, we didn't tell people this is what you need to do because there's right. going to be an oil crisis. Instead, we were just saying there's an oil crisis. What are you doing? How right. are you coping? And so we were really open to people bringing their own ideas about what really made sense in their lives. In many ways, I think they're going to be leaders in their communities when the next crisis hits. It doesn't have to be the oil crisis. They've really right. learned resilience right. to kind of anything. Sure. Next time, if we were to run in a world without oil game, I mean, how many players would we get this time? You know, would we get 10,000? Would we get 100,000? Would we get a million players of World Without Oil? It's totally terrifying for me as a game designer to think about, <laughs> but it's totally possible. What did you learn personally from the input of this game, the, the people who contributed to World Without Oil? I mean, did you have some really incredible personal insights or, you know? 
I yeah. mean, you must have learned a lot about yeah. how you could go about solving problems in your community, right? Yes, indeed. When you actually get out there and start, and you just create this sort of mechanism where you actually extract people's authentic stories, they know a lot about a lot of different stuff. When you start to put them together in like these huge groups where they're all collaborating on these stories, they're incredibly creative about the stories. You know, when you start asking about what reality is, they're incredibly insightful about reality. You know, to me, what, what you find out in World Without Oil is, you know, for the right questions, even things where you think that you need to listen to the experts, uh -huh. you get enough people together under the right circumstances, collaborating, they are smarter than the experts. And, and they're also smarter because they don't have any ax to grind. They're mm -hmm. just trying to get at the truth, right? Mm -hmm. they're, collaboratively. They're just trying to figure out what's what. You know, they, they're not invested in some sort of scientific paradigm. You don't have to worry about who they're being paid by. Yeah. You know, where's their money coming they from? They don't have a lobbyist. They don't have a lobbyist at their door. I mean, this is really authentic stuff. And that, that actually is a good word to, to bring up in just an association with World Without Oil. It was authentic. I mean, it was the real deal. People were saying what their lives, you know, it's, it's really odd because, of course, in, to say that something which was totally fantasy, mm -hmm. <laughs> totally made up and fictitious, well. um, would be authentic. Yeah. But yet, when you go and look at the material online, you see exactly what that means. I mean, the scenario was fictitious. But what people are saying, that was their lives. That was their future. So anyway, that's, that's what I've learned uh, really from World Without Oil is you know, the idea that collaboratively, we are really, really smart.